Distribution provided by Cloud Sigma, the cloud that adapts to you. Visit cloudsigma.com slash thisweekend for a free $200 credit. This Week in Startups is brought to you by New Relic. Use promo code TWIST and get a free month of New Relic Pro. To redeem, visit newrelic.com slash thisweekend and see why thousands of developers worldwide don't deploy without it. And by GoToMeeting. Sign up for GoToMeeting using promo code START to begin your free trial. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Today on the program, Howard Lindzen is with us, angel investor extraordinaire, creator of Stock Twits. It's going to be an amazing episode. People said it would never happen. Calacanis, Lindzen, together, finally. Stick with us. It's going to be amazing. That's what it's all about, man. They said, money is the root of all evil. Funny how it feeds my people. We ain't going to live like me. Until we get the money, spend the money and defeat you yeah. Money is the root of all evil what? Funny how it feeds my people yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals Until we get the money, spend the money and defeat you Hey everybody, hey everybody, welcome to This Week in Startups. If you're wondering what the program is about, well, you're an idiot. It's This Week in Startups. What the hell do you think it's about? It's about startup companies, it's about entrepreneurship, it's about putting a dent in the universe. With me today, Howard Lindzen, who is a serial entrepreneur, a um, a commenter, a ball, you'd say ball buster, yeah. pretty much, is pretty accurate. I my balls busted. But you, you, you. Ball busting is not on the seven list. It's like the seven dirty words. You put $10 in the box. And um, also, Stock Twits, I guess, is the biggest company that you're associated with. Yeah. But you previously did Wall Strip in 2006 with, what was her name? Lindsay, Lindsay Campbell. Who Lindsey Campbell. I'm going to see after this. Oh, is she working here? working on some other stuff. She's yeah. in L.A. now. Oh, okay. Yeah, i got to hook up with her. She, yeah, um, she had reached out. out to me. Yeah. Um, was she doing Business Insider for a little bit? No, I think she Sonora. just outsources some stuff. Got it, got it, got it. Um, well, we're going to have an amazing episode. Howard has invested in a ton of how many companies? 50. 50 companies is double the amount of angel investing I've done, so we're going to have some really, we're going to have pound real talk, like hashtag real talk about angel investing, bubbles, valuations, all kinds of stuff, how he makes his decisions to invest in companies, and he's had a pretty good track record, I can tell you that. Um, and we'll talk about stock twists in the stock market, finance. It's going to be a great episode. Uh, you love stocks. That's what I'm here for. I like stocks, too. Yeah, yeah. I buy stocks sometimes. And uh, hey... This is all possible because my good friends at GoToMeeting, thank you to my friends at GoToMeeting for making, number one, a great product that I use all the time. I use the product constantly. People try to set up meetings with me. They want to use just like their mobile phones, whatever. I'm just like, I need to like be able to get your complete attention, share a screen with you, have you share your screen with me, have perfect fidelity on that voice over IP. Uh, the VoIP stuff is amazing. HD Faces is amazing. Go get your 30-day free trial. Go to GoToMeeting, click the Try It Free button. And then use the promo code START, S-T-A-R-T. And uh, you will love it. Meeting is believing. And these guys are such menches. They're giving away an iPad, right? They just love the audience so much. And this is, like, not a cheap iPad. This is, like, the serious, like, really well 32 gig, you know, not the 16 gig. Um, and how do you get it? Um... How do you get it? <laughs> there's, some, there's, there's some kind of contest here. See, this is the problem with contests. They're always so confusing. This way, where, where, da, 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 who do you want to meet? Where in the world would you meet from and why this holiday season if you had a go-to meeting app on the iPad. Tweet us with the hashtag twist iPad pound twist iPad. All right, so this is a terrible contest idea, but it's, it's you need a free iPad. So where would you want to meet? Who would you, where in the world would you want to meet and why? So I guess that would be like, I want to meet in Hawaii. I, get, I, I think I get it. It's just poorly written. This is my staff. Somebody's got to write this in English. I can have them replace Philippines. The Philippines write better English, I think, than here in America. Yeah. I agree. Um, where in the world would you meet and why this holiday season if you had a GoToMeeting app on your... Oh, I see. GoToMeeting works on your iPad, which I know because I've used it. And where in the world would you like to do your meeting from? Right. So I would say Hawaii, right? Where would you say? Uh, Coronado. Coronado, basically. <laughs> the place live. you live. Right. You basically, this is the thing people don't realize. If you move to California, people are like, people where do you go on vacation? It's like... I live in Southern California. That is a, that's the vacation destination for the United States. Even downtown LA is better than anywhere else. Exactly. Uh, so just put pound twist iPad, T-W-I-S-T iPad, uh, and you'll win that. Thank you again. And uh, it's your Gary. It's your humble honor. It's your duty to say thank you at GoToMeeting on your Twitter account right now, unless you're driving down the 405, in which case, mm, just pull over and do it. Uh, so anyway, Howard Lindzen, you are um, 
You were a hedge fund guy? Still run a hedge fund. Still run a hedge fund. It's the original 1998 fund. And what, what exactly years. is a hedge fund for people who don't know? Because it's not angel investing. It's not public investing. What, what does that mean when people say hedge fund? Hedge fund means you're, you have friends or, or, or people that trust you immensely. Right. Uh, so it's a terrible world, a word, so I apologize. It's really a limited partnership hmm. where your partners are wiring you money yes. to do as you please. So it's like, here's a bucket of money. Mm -hmm. Make it increase. Yes. And the pressure is, uh, I, I think hedge funds have a terrible... Uh, when I did it, it was, oh, I just started a hedge fund. Every, every idiot in the world starts a hedge fund. That was right. 98. Right. This is the same people that are saying now, if you start up a company, you're an idiot. Right. Okay. So I don't listen to anybody. Right. I, I listen to myself and smart people. You take your own counsel. I take counsel of smart people. Oh, yeah, of Hence course. Hence the web. You right. can follow smart people. And um, but uh, so a hedge fund, it's, it's, it's just a fancy word for a limited partnership that allows the manager, me, to do whatever the hell he pleases, which is usually stated in a document. And my document says, Howard may change his mind a lot. So right. So, so you're giving him your money and his job is to do well and he gets paid 2% of, of the assets, which I, I've waived for the last six or seven years, and just 20% of the profits. Ah, right. So it's a standard like management fee. Yeah. So if you had $100 million, you get $2 million a year or whatever it is, yeah. and then you get 20% of the upside, just like a venture capitalist. And right. we can get into it later, but this is why the industry broke, is it became about gathering assets, mm. not just like the mutual fund business, which is dying towards right. ETFs, which will then die back towards individual companies through AngelList and the stock market. Again, it's a big service. Circle. But but the way the way it started is oh get me to four billion because then I can make eight hundred million a year and I don't have to take any risk. So now you got uh, four billion dollar managers making two percent, making eighty million. Happy to make zero. Right. You only need one year uh, at four billion under management, and this is the problem in the uh, world. They need to break up the the big funds. But you know I've already jumped. So there are myself. these huge funds like Blackstone or whatever. Stupid. And Why they, would I give my money to Blackstone? They say they got billions of dollars. Yeah. And they can just go buy C World or whatever. And the bigger the deal they do, well, the why better. would they buy SeaWorld? Why not just buy Treasury, U.S. Treasuries, which is what everybody's doing, right. because it's the only thing where you can actually call the next day and get your money back. Right. So everybody's in the same trade right now, right. which is U.S. Treasuries. And all the smart people are saying, well, that's impossible. Rates need to be higher. Right. But if I'm running $4 billion and my customers don't want to take risk, the only thing I can do is put it in Treasuries, because when you call to redeem it in three days, because Apple's down 2% and you saw it on CNBC, I have yeah. to give you your money back. Ah, so this so, redemption issue is huge. huge. Now, there's a ton of money in the world. This is what we keep hearing. Yes. There's a ton of money freely available. Mm -hmm. But then you hear entrepreneurs saying, I can't raise money. Yeah. Is this because those entrepreneurs don't have good ideas, or is it because the people who have all this money just don't have an intelligent way to deploy it to those entrepreneurs? <laughs> What's going on there? Because there seems to be angel investing became very fluid in the last couple of years. Valuations got high. Number of investors grew with AngelList. But then we're hearing now Fred Wilson blogging about it, other people blogging about it, this sort of trench between angel and first round. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think it's up to the angel investors to pick great companies and stick to their knitting, just like me running a hedge fund since 98. It used to be that, uh, that uh, in a way, you know, like like uh, the Russia was the thing. Right. Then it blew up, and then right. we had long-term capital management. You have to go with the punches. You've right. been through a few cycles. Fred's yeah. through, been through ten. Right. I've been through eight right. up and down cycles where all oh, the world will never bounce back from this. The right. world always bounces back. Raising money is just as hard as being a CEO. Is just as hard as 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 doing anything. It's right. a job. Raising money is a skill. So if right. you can't raise money, doesn't mean you're an idiot or your company sucks. It's a skill. You got to get better at it. Ah, and. What do you think the skill is? Like when you have somebody come to raise money from you, there are some people where it's just like you can't write the check fast enough, I suppose. You're just yeah. like, you know it's going to work. And there are other times where you're just like, God, there's so many red flags going off here. You know, it's just. I like it early because, again, uh, you know, this goes. I think every person that listens to your show that runs yeah. a startup should learn the f 10 bucks yeah. stock market. I'm amazed when I walk into business schools or in front of entrepreneurs, and I've never opened up a stock, a stock page that don't have a Schwab account or any right. trade account. Uh, and 10 years ago, taxi drivers had Schwab accounts. Now, smartest kids in the world don't want to buy a stock. They put and their money that? in a They're Vanguard just afraid index. that everything got burned. It's a language that they need to learn because they're not thinking about making money. Okay? Got it. You have to start early. You know, you don't have to go to Tony Robbins. Right. Uh, definitely. But you need to read about this stuff and, and surround yourself with positive, you know, and if you're a hardworking person, you're going to make money. Therefore, one day, 
put that, take control of your money. Don't right. hand it off to anybody. And so what is the lesson there of stocks in terms of how, how does knowing the stock market make me a better entrepreneur? Uh, knowing the stock market is being an entrepreneur. So whether you're 14 or 15 and you get money for your bar mitzvah or your sweet 16 or in your case, I don't know, for your breasts. I think, uh, co- no, not my breasts. When my, did you get my, your uh, first bit of cash? <laughs> I think that and was I know my you uh, bought communion. A stock. Okay, your communion. communion. You got my a chip communion. with 12 bucks. Well, and I know like if it's up to you, you bought a stock with it. Uh, I didn't think I bought stocks back then, but I did buy stocks when I was in college, yes. And you bought it from a broker who screwed you over, probably, and the first few times you bought a stock, you lost $35 a trade. Yeah. And I was buying like $200 worth of stocks. That was was cheap. I remember uh, buying Akamai. 17%. And the spread was $20. Right. Of the stock. Wow. And people thought the market was broken 11 years ago, and now the spread's a nickel or a penny. Or a fraction of a penny. And you can't make money. Hmm. So, you know, people get what they ask for. The market's... This is a great time to learn the market. And what I try and teach people around finance is all the markets are connected. So if you're an angel investor, it's your job to understand the bond market, the stock market, and venture capital market, if you want to raise money. Because you've right. got to understand how everything's connected. Right. Okay? And that's why AngelList is so interesting, because the data on AngelList is now connected to Wall Street. So if I'm watching Open Table stock last year, right. or two years ago, and the stock's running up, all the smart people in the world are saying it's overvalued, it's overvalued, it's overvalued. Right. But what they didn't know is that on AngelList, there was 500 startups starting that were doing Yield management butts and seats. Hmm. And therefore, the market, hmm. the momentum people, whether they knew it or not, I knew it because I'm watching AngelList. And I'm thinking if Open Table does not sit on AngelList uh, and buy up 200 of these companies, right. they're going to get disrupted. Right. Okay, that I knew. I didn't know when. Okay, and you look at Salesforce, the complete opposite example of Open Table, which has sat on AngelList or at every startup event and killed innovation, if if you will, or yeah, they smart buy, enough. They buy anybody. Benioff they, will buy anybody who could potentially pose a threat. And, and absorb so them he, into the board. Yes. So he's owning Take them off the, the food chain. Right. Right. And so, yes, he's setting back innovation. Guess what? Microsoft set back innovation 20 years. So you so, buy the people who might. No, I'm saying it's competitors. what's worked. Yes. So you have to learn how to read the market, right. meaning AngelList was not a tool that was available right. two years ago. That was just opaque. You so just hedge funds don't have... even know it exists, and they're supposed to be making me money. I'm sitting here, Joe Schmo in right. Coronado, and I'm reading the tea leaves better than anybody's ever read it because I can read Fred Wilson, watch your show. Right. Right. Go on AngelList, see the data, talk to Naval, look at the all-time high list, see what, see how everything's connected. Right. So the faster entrepreneurs do that, right. the faster they have an edge. The smarter they sound both at cocktail parties and the smarter they sound to investors. Got okay. it. Second thing they do, learn to play a game, golf, something, and learn how to, some social etiquette. Because right. just because you're smart doesn't mean you're going to get money. Right. A lot of smart people are at Google. Right. They're not going to ever go out and start their own thing. That's Google's genius. Google is there building that first home for really smart people, and they do everything else for you. Smart people like to be pampered. Right. And that's why Google's a great company. They're solving a problem for smart people. Smart people need a, where, a place to run on a treadmill and get their energy out. They do. Out. They do. They want to work hard. Yeah. Google just created an environment for the smartest, hardest working people to kind of... Hang out, which means you're incredibly lives. long. Google, you think Google is going to be here 50 years from now, has crushing it? Has to be, especially now. If the stock goes to 100, everything changes. Hmm. Okay, but I don't see it going to 100 because you know we already survived 2008. The right. world was supposed to end in 2008. It did. That's what smart people told me. Right. It didn't. So hmm. for those people who think the world's going to end, I don't know what else you could throw at the world than 2008. Right. I just don't know. That was the moment if your ATM didn't work. There was about a month period there. Yeah. If your bank machine stopped working, there would have been (laughs) chaos. We were 10 minutes away from that. But you're not going to really get much that closer. close to having just bedlam in the streets, people oh, yeah. like shooting places up, oh, yeah. looting and madness. Close. I always feel we're close, but that was like. That was really close. And you close. see in Greece when just people are like, oh, I have to five Greece more years to retire. The Greeks have been like this forever. Right. They don't want to pay taxes. That's what right. happens to people who don't want to pay any taxes. Right. They just wake up every day saying someone's out to screw me. That right. doesn't work either. Luckily, they're in a little corner of the world. They Small have no population. weapons. And they have good weather, so so they should be fine. Yeah, and it's not going to impact the market here. So let's talk about angel investing. When you f- you said networking is critical, yes, and that this ability to interact on a human to human basis works. But what is it when you're meeting with somebody that makes? What what are some of the angel investments you've made that are you know the most successful? And what did you? What sense did you get as an angel investor in the meeting? Uh, good question. So there's, there's, there, it's, it's so different. I'm very eclectic, yeah. meaning I hate being called. 
Right. I like to be the aggressor. Got it. Okay. So, so I had to build my own name for myself because nobody knew who I was. Right. So, but I always felt that there was an edge starting in when I think I saw, uh, I searched term sheet in 2005 for a golf deal that I was doing. And right. I found Brad Feld's blog. It was right. term sheet. And I was like, what the f yeah. That guy just gave me air. I didn't know who he was or whatever. And I'm right. like cut and pasting his term sheet. Right. And I'm doing this uh, an investment that eventually uh, was Golf Now, which eventually right. got bought by Comcast. And I'm like the VC in the deal. I didn't even know what a VC was. And I put in a uh, term sheet. It comes out there. Then I go to the blog room. I see Fred Wilson, a uh, bunch of guys that I've become friends with, Rick yeah. Siegel, all the smartest people. That's how I'm sure I came across your name yeah. early on. And I'm reading Fred's blog, leaving these lunatic, hilarious... Right. Off-topic kind of comments about I mean, the market. Your, your behavior on Twitter and social networks is you're... I, I kind of feel like you're a zippy or like a, a, an absurdist, like yeah. fr, like a throwback to like the 60s, 70s absurdist, like, you know, I'm just going to poke fun at everything. And that Including just, myself. Yeah, right. I, th I think Jim Cramer could have owned... Could have, could have been us. Could have been yeah. Fred Wilson. Could have been... A, he was a superstar. Right. So nobody knows who he is, but he really invented blogging. And Fred right. Wilson had invested in him. And you yeah. would know who he is. Yeah, I mean, he used to write he has less hair than notes. you, but he's like you. Yeah. He's dynamic. He's crazy. Right. He was an early adopter of technology. He was Harvard. He roomed with uh, Crazy Man uh, Bomber. Right. That was his roommate at Harvard. Right. They then both goes have the same assets. Yeah. yeah, they're that both... Must have been a loud room. That Can you imagine room. if they both ate beans at the same time? Steve Ballmer and terrible. Jim Cramer. Yelling and screaming Talking and farting. And farting. Yeah. So, uh, so that was the guy in my world that inspired me. Mm. So, you know, if tech people have Andreessen or you or Fred yeah. or Brad, for me it was Kramer. I was right. like, I'm like, this I don't guy read the Wall Street Journal. BS. I can't afford a Bloomberg. Right. And I'm like, well, who's, and then all of a sudden I'm like, Kramer. Yeah. Great writer. He was passionate. There was right. no video. It was just like, banging away at his keyboard. And uh, he could have been the guy. Right. But he chose TV. And TV mm. is is evil of all evil, meaning if you choose TV, you're giving up a lot of stuff. You're right. giving up your family. You're giving up your, your soul. You're giving up a lot of things to do TV, including making a lot of money because TV is time suck. Right. And you're not meeting any interesting people on TV. Right. You're just stuck for 10 hours a day in a studio. Yeah, and makeup and this and that. Right. It's a terrible life. But he chose it. Right. And he gave that opening to other people in the financial web. He should own the financial web. Right. Right. And so in 2004, 2005, and I'm farting around after the crash and right. blah, 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 and I'm finding the internet. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is wide open. I can't believe guys like that haven't invested. So who do you wind up investing in? Who was, um, the, who was like one of the most successful angel investments? The, uh, Bunny Media. Yeah. And, and, and probably second is, is a company called Rent.com, which was a right. 2000... A, a 1998 investment, top of the bubble. Right. Uh, it was like a series Q. Red.com. It was rent. Oh, but rent it was called Viva.com. Yes. Yeah, yeah, LA, sure. Santa Monica. Yeah. So, stupid investment. Uh, it was called Viva.com. 60 million. People think it's a bubble now. It was yeah. 60 million pre money. Wow. 2000, uh, 1998. Wow. Um, Scott Ingram, who's Austin, Santa Monica. Excuse me, I put some money in that. And uh, should have gone to zero. Great CEO. Ended up selling it for $450 million in 2005 wow. to eBay, which has wow. now since sold it. So out of luck, Seven I discovered, oh. yeah, but it should have been a zero. Right. So, I mean, and I had a lot of money in it. So, right. I mean, in terms of dollar amount, that really put me back in play. Awesome. Okay. So, so from learning from Rent.com, yield management, I was like, well, yield management, that's the web. It's right. like taking inventory that you couldn't sell anywhere else. And putting it on the web. Perfect. So I was like, so I, so, I, so I become friends with Scott to see her. I go, Scott, like, we got to do this in other industries. Right. right. And I've never even been on the web. I'm just right. saying, like, $450 million, it's a, Everybody won. It's a great right. business. You're helping landlords, yada, yada, yada. He goes, yeah. And so as luck would have it, a kid walks into my office in Phoenix in 2005 with the same concept around tee times. And I love golf. And it was called Golf 602. And he had bought up all the... All area the codes. area codes. Genius. Yeah. So Terrible branding, but genius, yes. Yes. And, and he had done some other stupid things. That's why he couldn't raise money, because he was like licensing the code to other states. And I was like, you got to own the whole thing. Yeah. you got to go buy it all. So I gave him some money. I said, let's buy everybody back. This is after I read Brad's yeah. term sheet thing. I said, I'll put in my rent.com money, oh. and I'm going to sell my house. That's how confident I was wow. in Paradise Valley in 2005. And that was turned out to be a good trade. But I took all that money and put it in this company called Golf. 
602, which quickly became Golf Now. We changed the name, ended up selling to Comcast a couple of years later, and it's been a home run for Comcast because they didn't pay too much, and they own the Golf Channel, and it's become the de facto open table of golf. Wow. So that was like my biggest, and I keep, I've kept parlaying it. And then, right. and then so how I met Mike Lazaro, who's probably the best entrepreneur I've backed in terms of at Buddy Media, yeah. is um, I kept cold calling Mike because Jim, James Altershay said, you know, Mike owned uh, golf.com, which he sold to NBC. Right. So now I own golf now and blah, blah, blah. So I'm cold calling this guy, Mike Lazaro. Don't know who he is. Not returning my call. Right. And nothing happened. Eight months later, I've started Wall Strip. Quincy Smith uh, yep. is buying us at CBS. I'm in a meeting with Quincy Smith, and Quincy goes, you should meet this guy, Mike Lazaro, who's consulting for us. I go, Mike Lazaro, that prick hey, did, that, didn't return my back. call. That prick didn't return my prick call. Is okay. Storm no, ten, out of Black Rock, like you know, like yeah. uh, the, the the Black Rock building. Yeah. Like I'm in Crocs and sunglasses. Right. Storm out like it's like I'm a somebody. Yeah. I go, this deal's off. Yeah. So they come chasing me. I go, what the. What's going on with you? Yeah. Well, I said, listen, CBS should buy my golf company. Screw Wall Street. Yeah. I got this great golf company. The right. market, like CBS owns sports. And I go, you yeah. guys should buy this. Yeah. So they calm everybody. I was just joking, but they right. calm everybody down. Lazar and I go for drinks. He goes, I can't wait to get out of CBS. I got this great idea to start a currency on Facebook. We're going to call it Ace Bucks. I laid down 50 grand. Yeah. My check hadn't even cleared from Wall Street. He right. was a great, I mean, like he had started yeah. golf.com, and I'm in. Next thing you know, I pick up the phone. I go, I got this handle, I'm going to call Pincus, because Pincus had invested in Wall Street. Yeah. Call Pincus on my cell phone. Pincus goes, I'm in for 250 Hangs up on me. I go, I look at Lazaro, and he's like cross-eyed. I go, Mike, we got 300 grand already. Let's go. Let's go. Two minutes later, Pincus calls me back, and he goes, I'm sitting here with Peter Thiel. He's in for 500000 Wow. That was Buddy Media, right there in a bar. Unbelievable. Yeah, Mike. And Buddy Media wound up selling for dumbest idea. Like it right. was Ace Box. Yeah. Mike and his wife, uh, who Cass, is amazing yeah. entrepreneur. They pivoted a few times, and and they wound up building like social media tools. Yeah. For managing your social media, if you're a brand or something. Yeah, and they timed it beautifully. And Salesforce bought them six months ago, five wow. months ago. And that was a huge win. That's hundreds 800, of million. Eight hundred million. Jesus. Five years. Wow. Just yeah. another five-year overnight success. And in a way, handshake deal, valuations were under $2 million. Right. Wow. Yeah. So I would say Mike is the best entrepreneur I've had. So it's like 300x. Returns. Yeah, no con. I've sold a lot early. Yeah. Uh, but uh, All right, when we as, get back, I want to hear out. about what you think of Facebook sh stock. Yeah. But don't sure. tell us now. Sorry to ramble, but it's a good story. I figured you should. Yeah, it. we'll get back to that. Okay. All right, hey, listen, let me just thank another sponsor here, New Relic, New Relic. Thank you so much for monitoring our websites. If you're running a website, you need to know the speed, right? Like stock twits, you need to know yeah. it's fast. If it's fast, people use it more. Yeah. And you need, and like you have to deal with all your tech people. Wouldn't yes, it be it nice is. to get a great email every day showing you um, how people were using your site and what speed it was? So here is your browser load time and how fast the page rendering is, or the web application, the network, all that stuff. So you know who to point the finger at, frankly. When things aren't working well and it's, it's too slow, everybody points the finger at each other. You got your network guy, you got your coder, you got the hosting company, everybody's pointing fingers. And you know what? New Relic helps you get through all that nonsense. You get to see exactly how fast your site is, or not fast, as the case may be, and iterate and make it faster. And I got to tell you, we started using this on uh, launch.co, and we figured out a lot of bugs, a lot of errors, and got the thing humming. And if you would like to get one of the New Relic um, free This Week in Startup t-shirts. See, these guys are savvy. They actually, oh, and here's the email, by the way. So I get this email every day, and it tells me how what the page load time is and what our uptime is. I'm like, oh, wait a second. That's the first time I haven't seen 100% uptime, 0.03% uptime. So now I can figure out when was that and what was the story. I can just, you know, be like the angry CEO, like, hey, we have to have better uptime. You know, like, what's going on here? But it, it, it does lead to great conversations on making your product better. Very affordable prices and a great company. Hey, and their customers, Skull Candy, Spotify, Nike, Zillow, uh, and Vonage. Hey, you may have heard of a couple of those companies. If you haven't, gosh, you're out of it. So uh, if you want to have X-ray vision into your apps, go ahead and sign up for New Relic. No credit card necessary. That's when you can tell if somebody's confident in their product when they don't require your credit card. Go to newrelic.com slash this weekend. And you get a free t-shirt. Look at that twist t-shirt right there. And it's got the samurai sword for all my samurai out there who are out there trying to make a dent in the universe. And that was uh, <coughs> done by one of our super fans. He actually designed the shirt. And the only way to get that shirt, I can't even get that shirt. I gotta sign up for New Relic. So go to newrelic.com slash this weekend and get 
and awesome free this weekend startup t-shirts. And thank New Relic by uh, just saying on your Twitter account, hey, thanks at New Relic for sponsoring independent media like this week in startups. All right. What story we're we going to tell? Facebook. Uh, you want to know about Facebook? Yeah. Yeah. Sold it last week. So I've been in and out of it a few times. Yeah. I, I think I, I would say to young investors, yeah. if if you like Facebook, you can do better. I mean, right. seventy billion dollar market cap again. Um, They're back up to seventy billion. Yeah. I mean, twenty six bucks, just over twenty six bucks. Had I sold it at twenty four again? Yeah. Uh, you think it could dip down into the teens again? Who cares? Yeah. I mean, I hope it stays between twenty and thirty for ten years. That's good right. for all of us. I mean, Why? what entrepreneurs need to think about is like stop worrying about what other people are doing. Yeah. You should be hoping, meaning you shouldn't buy stocks and hope, but we should all be hoping that Facebook figures it out. I right. don't understand why people hope these companies fail or whatever. Right. We need Facebook. The Scheuden, Fruden, whatever. We need people to figure that out. When right. I started Wall Street, when you were doing video, we yeah. wanted people to figure out. Yeah. I figured when I started Wall Street that, goddamn, Yahoo, Google, somebody would have figured out how I was going to make money two years out off right. my video. Here we are in 2012. Nobody's figured it out. YouTube I mean, you would say, to. YouTube starting okay, to. Start we're figuring we're out talking the about, of the We're talking about 06. I know. Podcasting started in, what, 2005, 2006, Dave Weiner and Adam Curry, and it takes seven years to figure it out. Okay. And, and to be And you honest, know what? Figuring it out is doing a live ad read like I just did. I mean, first of all- It's back to the future. It's back to the future, because content's still king. Right. But but the thing about content is, and this is what's so hard about what you do or what Wall Street was with Lindsay, I mean, Jesus, age, Christ. You'd make the show. Right. On TV people, that's all they have to do. Right. They have to show up. They make the show. Go Distribution's home. handled by everybody else. Yes. Yeah. Everything's handled by everybody. You know, but right. on web content, you got to do audience beginning. development. That's the nightmare is yeah. finishing the show. Then right. you got the work to do. So I think a lot of my investments came from being an entrepreneur. So right. so a lot of my great investments came from doing Wall Street. Right. Because to Mogul, which I'm a, one of, a great investment that I made, yeah. that was a tool that I was using in 2006 to aggregate all we my views. To, yeah, to yeah, Mogul, yeah, yeah. you could like post once to like 50 Everywhere. services. Everywhere. So it was like feed burner for video. And right. that's how I called Dick Costello. I called Dick. I said, Dick. You know, feed you dumb enough not to invest in Wall Street. And right. he was like, we were friends through Fred. Yeah. I go, how about feed burner for video? Goes on in. Right. So I, I closed Dick for Two Mogul. Dick was on the board up until recently, and Dick was an early investor with me in Two Mogul. Did Two Mogul get sold or Two bought? Two Mogul will do 50, 60 million in sales this year. That's right? unbelievable. They're, yeah. So they are the sneakiest web video company out there because they're the real time. They're actually serving ads in real right. time. For they're like a Google of real time video. Right. And so they built a great company, and they've pivoted, of course. Right. But that investment came from me using. Starting Wall Strip and just figuring out how to make Wall Strip work because we weren't going to make any money, so we had to yeah. run it as lean as possible. And I was using like a spreadsheet, like with, like okay, we had four views over here on Daily Motion, we had six views on VO, right, and we had twelve on YouTube, and then I was adding them all together, and You're all like, of a sudden, one of the kids was like, one of our interns was like. That's awesome. Just save me two hours a day to know where Rever and all these companies. Yeah, yeah. So, so my bet in 2006 was, it's impossible that YouTube could grow bigger than 50, 60 percent of the market share. So, luckily, even though I was wrong, it's turned right. out well. Who would have thought that YouTube yeah. would still dominate like they do and even it's more? And dominating even more. Yeah. So I that mean, was I, a tough bet. So I yeah. would have been wrong on that bet, but I was I was long Google as my hedge. Google is unstoppable. Right. It's unstoppable right now because. They have done such a great moat strategy around the ad network. Oh, it's unbelievable. People that, and I'm not a tech guy, so right. let's assume that I'm completely wrong about that. Right. But they have such lockdown with me and Droid, which I don't use, but right. Gmail, Chrome. Gmail keeps getting better for me, even right. though it's kind of weak. Right. Works for me. Yeah. Uh, no reason to switch. No, ever. What's multi decade, you know, like relationship. Yeah, multi decade relationship. They'll back into a social network through YouTube, I would imagine, at some yeah. point, which is a big bet of mine. Right. Being long Google. It's starting to happen. I mean, the, the new designs of YouTube are very like channel and friend and subscribe. Yeah, I just based. invested in a local company here called Blaze, B L A Y Z E, Ben I've Smith. Heard of that. Yeah. And he worked at YouTube. He's one of the first guys working at YouTube. Right. Young kid. I mean, he knows more than anybody. Right. Whether he failed or not at YouTube is not the point. The right. point is he learned. Right. And, and Google Video. So I think LA's just, you know, LA's got the, this gene about it around video. Right. And so I'm, I'm pretty excited. How come Facebook Because I'm not an LA fan, but right. I like, I don't mind coming up for the day now. No. I, you know, and, and seeing entrepreneurs because there's yeah, a lot great. of energy. It's a lot of energy here. And video works particularly well because people want to buy the ads on it. The ads work. They're, they're working. Yeah. I mean, people are getting paid. Social media, eh, I'm not sure. 
Right. Congrats to the entrepreneurs that have done well. Hootsuite, TweetDeck, which I was an investor Tools. in. Tools. Tools. Shovels. Buddy picks, Media. Axes. But nobody's buying shit. Nobody's buying ads on social media. It's, it's a tough haul. And in the end, Amazon just raised three billion. They can go buy Bitly. They can go buy Twitter. They can yeah. go buy all. I mean, Amazon yeah. should buy Twitter. I mean, they just raised three billion. Why would Amazon buy Twitter and not Google? Well, Google doesn't. I think Google's lost interest finally in ah. that stuff. I think Google's calmed down a lot. I think Google can go to their employees. This is the way. If I'm Larry Page, I'm like, fuck. Me. If I'm an employee of Google and I didn't leave to go to Facebook, right? I'm like kissing the ring, right? Because. My stock's up 30%. Right, or and they is down 50. Yeah. And so and they're underwater. So I, And then I would have been, you know, now you got an enemy, too. Yeah. So if I'm at Google, I'm going to say I was smart. I'm, here's two things I'm going to say if I stayed at Google. Oh, I was so smart. I saw that coming. Right. Right. And I'm going to be a better employee because Google really did win. Right. Uh, so I think they're going to, I think they had that lockdown again. Yeah. Where the smart people are saying, I'm not going to chase the next shiny star. Right. Because, and that's why Amazon's out raising $3 billion. Which is genius because, and I was writing about yesterday, because they just raised three billion at like one percent interest rate. They got a three billion dollar bond. They're buying real estate. They bought a billion dollar headquarters in Seattle or whatever to woo e-commerce kids that fail. Yeah. To come work in Seattle, where they'll probably put in a fake sun right. and it won't rain in this weather. <laughs> and yeah, less depression. People are put emailing some each other going, water. "What's it like to work at Amazon?" That's the number one email today. It's like, right. "What's it like to work at Amazon?" Because yeah. they're there now to coddle. The uh, scrotums of young entrepreneurs. Scrotum wow, I word? think no, but I do think that, that that was the first time anybody's ever coddled scrotum I, that on the show. just came into my head. That's why Twitter works for me. I would have tweeted that. <laughs> All right, let's was... talk about stock twits. Um, yes, thank you. This is a great idea. Um, I always love this idea, and actually, in in the launch ticker, you're I, using it. I love it. I am using you, your you're smart. innovation, which is just to put the hash, the dollar sign, yeah. in front of a ticker. You came up with this idea, so brilliant. Uh, the team, or somebody uh, on your team. Yeah, I think it was me, and 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 Soren was my co-founder, and Chris Corvo, who's still like the great thing about StockTwits is yeah. the the original team, mm. all there. Wow. Four years later. I mean, it was a smart team. Yeah. So um, I wrote the blog post saying Twitter is stupid. So, you know, I'm definitely wrong all the time. Right. Fred and I were good friends, and Fred offered me an investment. And Fred offered me a 25 grand investment. It's like, this is the dumbest idea ever. But I said Twitter for stocks. Now, that's really smart. So said, Twitter you pass on at it was 25K, a and it was, uh, what, $500 million valuation? Twitter. No, no, no. Uh, three on 17. Three million on seventeen million. Yeah, that's confidential. Okay, we'll make sure we. So, uh, so anyway, you could have invested at twenty million. So the best story is it's Jeff now Pulver worth was Fred's billion. next phone call. So anytime Jeff Pulver sees me, he comes up and hugs me because he said, "Yeah, he was the next phone call that Fred oh. called." To Fred, yeah, pro like Fred hung up for me. And, you know, I was looking for smart people, network people. Yeah, Fred's smart. Like somebody with a couple more IQ points than Linson. Yes, and he called Jeff. Ah. And Jeff said, of course. Yeah, Jeff makes, made a lot of money makes total sense. Yeah. Now, luckily for me, I've backed into a lot of shares because the next day I'm, I was an investor in Betaworks. Ah. And, and so some eyes got bought. Which was search for. Yeah, and, and, and at the same time, I was investing the first investor in TweetDeck with mm. John Borthwick. So I already. And TweetDeck got bought. Yeah, by, by, uh, yeah and we're talking TweetDeck was under a million valuation in 2008. So, wow. like, not that long ago, in 2008, you could buy. Bitly was And now you two. have uncapped notes, tw 10, 15 no million dollar. It's yeah. just ridiculous, right? Because if you're putting in 25% uh, or you're putting in 25,000 and get 1% of a company, it feels good. But putting in 25% to get, I don't know, 10, uh, 10 basis points or 20 basis points feels bad. Yeah, and look, people are not thinking about this. There's, again, that's why you got to understand the stock market. It's not, and Mark Cuban and I would argue about this all the time, yeah. it's not how many shares you own. Right. It is, you've got to do math. Right. Math has to work. I passed on Twitter because I have rules. Right. At 20 million valuations, same right. with Zynga, which I passed on, which same rules. Right. It's like, I don't invest in $20 million companies because in my head, when they don't have any customers and I got to think about a $200 million exit, do you know what that means? To, like, yeah. You know There's what it means because you started a company. Yeah. It's a long road. Yeah, it's ridiculous. How yeah. many companies become two hundred million dollar companies? One out of two hundred. Less. I One out think. of three hundred. Whatever. One out of a thousand. I'm talking about angel investors. Okay. Yeah. So, so I just as a rule, if it's under three million, at least I first question I ask: What are you thinking of price? Because why yeah. am I even talking to you if you're at six million and I'm at two? Right. 
because I just have to say no. Too far. I, I just have to say no. Mm. And and that's what comes from learning about stocks. Pruning, pruning, pruning. Same with a garden. Anybody good at anything prunes. Mm. You have to curate, 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 which is stock twits as well. It's like, I love Twitter, but it's ridiculous that machines are just spamming all day. Right. So so why would I want to create an experience for users? I try to create stock twits for me. Stock right. twits is, you know, if any good which entrepreneur. Which is a, a great way to start a company. It has right? to be the only way. I started Wall Strip for me. I right. wanted to make fun of CNBC and Wall Street. And I, f I was inspired by Letterman, by guys like you. I was inspired by Fred. I was inspired by Kramer. I was inspired uh, in a weird way by CNBC because I wanted to do the opposite. It was right. like one ticker a day. Let's dive in. Let's talk about the trend. Let's blah, 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 blah. Cute and not woman. do 15 seconds. Yeah. And, like and so I was doing CNBC it for me. Did. It helped me think through ideas. Uh -huh. And the very first stock we covered was Apple. And it was like this stock. You know, I was in the retail store on Fifth. Mm. You know, it was a really funny show, and I was like, I was wearing Jewish. Uh, I was wearing my talis, and I was at the at the, <laughs> at the store. I was putting post-it notes on the store, like the Wailing Wall, and I was like, build more stores. That was my message to Steve Jobs in 2006. I'm build very, more stores. That was the the cut yeah. in our first store, and like billionaires were watching the show and laughing. Right. And and um. Because it was very difficult, because I'm not an actor, and I right. hate the camera. I, I right. love doing radio or whatever, but I hate yeah. the camera. No, you have a face for radio. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and That's what people keep telling me. Uh, yes, and a, and a middle section for radio. So I... It was so scary to be in New York, and you're a New Yorker, to get, yeah. like, it's all, oh, yeah, I can do that. I'll just yeah. walk up to the store in my talus and my kippah, and I'll, like, just <laughs> burge in and start praying in front of the glass store, and I'll put a post-it note there. But you and understand my reality. Out. And as soon as I got out of the cab, and, like, Leslie, uh, Lindsay was there with me, yeah. she was like, you got to do this, and they were trying to, like, and Egg I'm so on. nervous. To, it's so it's so hard to be an actor, obviously, right. and that's when I knew I had a self. So in the first show, I knew like we got to get the f out of this idea, right? Because I can't <laughs> act. I can't act. I don't right. want to do this. But you had Lindsay. She's great. She was incredible. Right. So Lindsay made the show in the sense that she got all her friends. It was great for everybody. Right. I mean, Lindsay ended up on The Sopranos like yeah. at the time. So, um, so we really revolutionized. She played a bada bing girl, right? Yeah. She, no, no, no. She played his teacher, the kid's teacher, oh. just one class, a history teacher. I and he's daydreaming about her, the little kid. <laughs> so Lindsay Genius. is, she was one of the greats. No, it is, still is. I mean, but so stock I, tweets. I Let's go back to the, like, the reason for stock tweets. It's yeah. you guys tweeting all day long, and instead of using a hashtag, you put a dollar sign in front of the yeah. ticker symbol. So, so that little innovation. Well, it started as a little innovation, exactly, yeah. not a company. Right. So I called Fred and I said, Fred, Twitter, like, why isn't Twitter? dot finance dot com. Like I said, let's disrupt CNBC. I said, first of all, Twitter yeah. should have disrupted Bloomberg. So, so you got Google, you got Yahoo, you got, you got Google doesn't want to mm. take on Bloomberg. They should. Right. Uh, you got crappy UI in New York. Mm. You've got Bloomberg and a bunch of meatheads mm. at Bloomberg. And by meatheads, I said they're not Google. There's right. a lot of smart people at Bloomberg, but the front facing of Bloomberg yeah. is a lot of pretty women, cocaine sales forces, yeah. two thousand dollar hustles, great customer support, obviously because right. it's New York. I mean, it's a customer but a lot support of software. A lot of cocaine and sale and a lot of sales meetings to get. Yeah, 50 those sales people are unhireable on the West Coast. Right. By the way. They're just too that, devious. Yes. It's, it's just too much world. scores. The hedge fund world is too much scores, world. too much blow. For sure. And too anybody many. denying that is has not been sold a Bloomberg machine uh, or a Reuters terminal or something else. So you've got so the West a, Coast, which is avoiding Wall ball. Street yeah. and doing terrible knockoffs. So, like, right. financial web is like a layup for investing, but right. that's a whole other story. But, you know, you got Andreessen poking around. You know, Chris Dixon is a really smart hire by right. them because Chris understands hedge funds and hates Wall Street. And, and we'll probably do do a better job of figuring out the financial web, right. but you know, Wealthfront and like Andreessen, Sequoia, they're, I think they're doing terrible financial deals. Like right. They started Kaching and they've pivoted into Wealthfront. I don't think Silicon Valley kids should should invest for themselves. I think right. you should still have a personal slave that makes your investment decisions for you, or right. a Schwab, which is plenty good enough. You right. can't disrupt. Just get an ETF. A commodity. Right. Right. You can't you can't disrupt a commodity. So I think Silicon Valley is attacking Wall Street from the very wrong angle. Angle. Now, Naval is attacking it from the very right angle, right. but he's not a VC. He's with this an crowdfunding stuff that the, uh, he's doing, because now he started to circulate deals, and with second market, you can put as little as $1,000 in a deal. Yeah, I don't he, know if second market's working, though. Yeah, I don't know either. But yeah, I mean, it did work would, for a long time, like trading Twitter it's and a trading. Brokerage. I mean, brokerage. define work. It's not yeah. so innovative in the sense that, I mean, I like the guys there, yeah. and they've raised but a trading, lot of money. Trading shares in companies that it's a dumb idea. weren't 
previously available. But that's what you do. I the dumb invest. idea to let dentists do Trading. it? Trading. I think it's a complete dumb idea. Yeah. I think people need to have experts. I think you need to, again. No, but if I'm a dentist and I, like, I'm on Facebook and my kid's on Facebook all day, can I just say, like, okay, if they're on it all day, I should just buy it? No, terrible idea. Really? Um, again, there's... Who's that? Who, whose school of investing is that? If Peter Lynch. Peter Lynch. Is, okay. like, that's... And, he, and he made a lot of money, but he also could move markets because he managed billions of dollars. So he ah. could... You could self, uh, what do you call it, perpetuate your ideas. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was running fidelity. Top 10 list. Not that he wasn't great. I'm just saying, styles come and go. Mm. The idea of investing in what you like, I do. Mm. So meaning, I look at all-time highs, right. which is the exact opposite of what other people do. Right. Okay. So everybody wants to buy cheap. I said cheap and expensive are the two most dangerous words in investing, mm. Okay. especially in the stock market. Mm. In the private market, cheap and expensive are the most important words. Mm. You need to invest cheap because right. you've got nothing. Right. Okay. And, you're th- and your entrepreneur is going to get punched in the face. How many times have you been punched in the face? This exactly. week? Or, yeah. Exactly. So nobody knows what it's like. Like what your entrepreneur is going to like. So either you say, I'm going to invest, stand still, I'm going to punch you like eight times right. and see if you still want me to invest, which right. is not going to happen. Right. But what's going to happen is you're going to wire them, they're going to get punched in the face, and then they're going to say, I don't really love the video space. Right. Right? And that's what people don't understand. So cheap and expensive matters a lot in the entrepreneur world. In the public markets, it's liquidity. You have liquidity. Therefore, you can change your mind every minute. Right. Who cares about cheap or expensive? Right. To have a thesis. Have some risk management. Have an idea. You can mm. go buy Facebook, but, but the good news is you can sell it tomorrow, too. But you, you pair your losses. If you can you pair wrong, your losses. You might only lose 20% or 30%. You can cut the But you bleeding. can change your mind. Mm. Or you can also change your mind on the way up, too, remember, right? You right. can use money management. So I'm a, a, you know, I'm a big believer in the stock market, right. and I think it's one of the greatest things that capitalism has. People are not has. putting their money in the stock market. Crazy. Crazy. There's great opportunities. And that's because people aren't learning. And that's what StockTwits is about. We're a mentoring education tool. If I'm going to learn from smart people, Mm. I want to learn from people who sit and talk about stocks all day. I want to learn the chatter. I want to learn the language. I'm going to go learn Spanish. I'm going to Spain or I'm going to Chile or wherever they speak Spanish. You want to be with the native people. And that's what the... That's what StockTwits is. Right. Tune in. Listen in. You don't have to say a goddamn thing. You just sit there and absorb. Sit there, curate, absorb. Like right now, looking at RIM, RIM has had this incredible run-up when people realized, oh my God, it's not going to zero. It's going to get bought, maybe. Something's going to happen. Yeah. So it went from six now to 12 or whatever, 11. I would argue that that's just noise. Dead count. Dead, dead cat bounce kind yeah. of thing. Like, yeah. I mean, there's who's, there's nobody left to sell. Everybody assumes it is at zero. Right. Everybody forgot it wasn't at zero. Right. But it doesn't mean it's a good company anymore. This is no. just noise in what is a deceased. What about Zynga? Let's talk about Zynga. Because Zynga has a billion, and we're both friends with Mark, and we both have done business with Mark, mm-hmm. uh, who's, who's a tremendous entrepreneur. Yeah. Billion dollars in revenue. And a great, billion and a half great in eye. Like, you, like, like oh, yeah. in the end, people don't Genius. realize he has a great investing eye. Oh, Forget yeah. about entrepreneur. We could yeah. argue all day who's a good entrepreneur. Yeah. But some people have the eye. No, no, he gets it. Yeah. And he's been through the, you know, the mail punch in the face relentlessly yeah. for the last couple of months. Mm-hmm. At two or three dollars, it's is it trading at like almost their cash value now? Yeah, but I don't want to buy. I mean, I'd rather invest in a startup. Right. Friction. So right. friction matters. You know, you got a billion six in the bank, but Wall Street hates him. Right. He's got all these ghosts well, in the what closet. Is he, what should he do? Go well, private. I mean, he's, you know, I can't give someone advice. It's already broken. Right. Then stay, if you're in for a penny, in for a pound. Right. If you got the money in the bank. Right. Just, you know, take two months off, figure it out. Yeah. Wall Street already is valuing it at zero, by the right. way. But it doesn't mean I want to buy the stock. Right. If I'm Mark, yeah, I'm all in. Yeah. But I mean, you, unless you really understand what Mark's going to do next with this company, yeah. I don't know. There's better opportunities. So right. I'm a friction believer. I mean, like, you want to find the least amount of friction Apple possible. No, no friction. friction. Zero friction. Except idiots that just don't understand the story. Right. And you're never going to get over that. There's and always going to be doubters. People, why are people doubting it? Because it's, is it this sort it of like. It sounds cool to say that Apple's, uh, you know, it's like cocktail right. party. Oh. Apple is not. Samsung's killing it. I said, right. have you been to a store? Right. Do you understand the lockdown that they have? Right. Do you understand that maybe they have a pact with Google? Maybe maybe just those guys all met before Steve died and said, listen, you know, we hate everybody else. We hate you a little less. Right. We're going to have a pact so the government doesn't come after us. We'll let you, we'll just own mobile together. You go right. in it free. I mean, I, you don't know what's happened. Right. But I just know those two companies are so well positioned right. for the next five or six years mm. that it seems very unlikely to even think about them. 
Right. Right. Other than in extremes. And, you know, last week you were, you were given an extreme. Apple was down eight weeks in a row. Right. You know, and I was like, I was on the stream going, come on, guys, like, stop talking about the end of the world here. This is right. an opportunity. Yeah. So sentiment plays into stock twits as well. Like, I like to read the stream and just get a feel for how lunatic people are. Do you track or have you thought about tracking people's actual performance and calls. And like I don't think it works. It doesn't work. Uh, here's why it won't work. And I've invested in a Covester, and yeah. I'm, I'm not saying it won't. It's why it doesn't work so far. Right. Is Co eBay of finding this, people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 99% of the people can't beat the averages. Right. Because the averages make sense. Mm -hmm. Because what makes sense for 99% of investors is put $500 or $100 a month into a diversified, I don't think a highly diversified, but a, a well-diversified pool of securities mm. and do it every month, right. a dollar cost average. So that's not... No, I don't you know don't why people don't do it. that. Completely underthink it, yeah. but be consistent because it, there's positive expectancy around smart people and mm. entrepreneurs and the system. Yeah. It's just proven. Right. So put your money to work consistently every month. Right. If you truly are going to invest and use stock twits and use mm. these tools that I'm helping create and yeah. mentoring, et cetera, then invest with the idea that I'm going to trounce the market. Mm. Why do I want to make 8% if I'm right. working so hard? I want to make 80%. Right. Okay, and it's not easy. I'm not saying you're going to do it, but that's the attitude you need to have if you're going to invest in the yeah, stock market. Yeah, if you're market. doing it full time, like I got to I have a line Bernstein managing like this group of money which is, you know, designed to like preserve capital, like balance portfolio nonsense. Mm -hmm. But then I got like this chunk of money which I gave to somebody who's I'm my cousin who runs like an energy hedge fund type thing that is very like 25% this year. Down 25 this year, up 50% this year, very big swings. Yeah. I'm not um, a, a believer in big swings. I, I, I believe that an average investor, yeah. if they learn the language yeah. of this stuff, can really do this. Right. Now, now, I'm not saying they need to invest in stocks, but by learning the language of the stock market, you're going to learn the language of all the markets, hmm. which is sentiment, mood, uh, you know, timing, um, networking, yeah. all those things that the stock market or any language Is it rigged, though? Like Mark Cuban says it's rigged. Individuals think, shouldn't get involved. I think if you really sat down with Mark, he's saying that for the masses. Right. Okay, because the masses don't want to take the time to learn how to invest. Ah. Okay. But if you really sat down with Mark, I think he would give me money. Yeah. And I'm not smarter than the average person. I think right. Mark would say, Howard, I, I, I trust you. Well, yeah. then isn't he saying that he believes that I can beat the market? Right. Okay. So so I think he's talking to both sides of his mouth there. Yeah. I think he's trying, that's TV Mark, mm. saying that for the right. masses. Right. And this is the problem I have with TV. But deep right. down, Mark believes in the market. Right. He's, he's, he's otherwise, he would well move his it. money to, with the other guy into, into Singapore. Mm. Has he? No. No. So Mark's a huge believer in the market. I think that's just part of TV celebrity Mark. What is the... Um what is the future of stock twits? You know, it's you've been doing it for a couple of years right now. It's, it's four it's years. Four years. <laughs> yeah. It's obviously got you're in finance, so it's just tons of great advertisers and marketers yeah. I see on the site all the time. Yeah. So you you must be making serious bank off of those on a CPM basis. <sighs> you know, but the display business is dead, so no. I'm no. gonna be honest with you and say that uh, the e trades, the Schwabs of the world, they've 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 cannibalized themselves. Mm. The, the industry's broken. Ah. So if you look at the way they advertise uh, that market has actually dried up, and that's just uh, I can openly say that with everybody because yeah. it, it helps me understand how to invest my money. Right. Okay. So, so they're the not paying for CPM. So they're... go look at Schwab stock. Go look right. at E Trade stock. Just you can pull up uh, yeah. ET is E Trade, which is e like an extraterrestrial bad company. That's what E Trade <laughs> is. Okay, it's a commodity a business. It hasn't moved in like right. six years. Right? right. It was a thousand dollar stock. It's two dollars. Wow. So 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 what does that say? That says two things. It says that business is a crappy business. Right. But the idea of personal investing has never been easier because mm -hmm. I can do it for nothing because right. it's a commodity business. I can do right. Ameritrade looks like Schwab, which looks like E-Trade, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, StockTwits has got to figure it out. And again, like Twitter, we're betting that Twitter will figure out different ways of advertising. We'll fast follow them. Right. You know, and, 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 and I would argue that they probably haven't. I mean, there's a lot of... You know, Twitter's gotten a little bit of a buy recently right. because people got tired of make, of talking about how they're going to succeed. So Twitter's right. been in a nice spot just trying to execute for the yeah. last four or five months. So I'm interested to see how they're doing. But I don't know. I, I mean, I like the in-stream ads, and, mm -hmm. and I think there's something there. They um, seem to work. I think they work. Because they're getting more and more targeted. 
It feels like yeah, I'm I, not seeing things that I should see. It's not annoying to me. A display yeah, ad's annoying, annoying. Cuz I've learned to block those out. Yeah. A display ad doesn't work. So we've been very creative at Stock Twits around uh, you know, using Hootsuite type model of selling, using mm. Twitter type models of selling. We're trying a lot of stuff. Got it. Um, where our true value lies is we have interesting data, interesting sentiment, you know. Mm. We're we're building a brand that I think people trust. I think trust is an important thing, just like people trust you and This Week in Startups. They yeah. trust StockTwits to get a picture of what's going on in the market. Right. And, um, you know. Interesting. So it, I don't know. What do you think should happen to StockTwits? Like, what do you think? If you were sitting back in your chair and I'm interviewing you, what, what would you have done if you, were, if you were competing against us or you were in the financial web business? Yeah, I mean, it seems like there's a large portion of people. You have this elite group of people, right? Like thinking it through, like these are people who do it all day, yeah. and then there's this larger. So you, they would pay for premium services. Yeah. Clearly, for them taking out their wallet and paying ten or a hundred dollars a month for something is no big deal. No. So there's got to be some. And we have thousands of customers that do that. Do some premium offering. Yeah. Um, but then there's this other mass of people, the larger group, the people that Cuban is saying it's a rigged game. Yeah. And I wonder if there's a product or a service for them that would just let them. Eavesdrop. Yeah, better. dabble, you know, and just get them on the road to, you know, not being schmucks. Yeah. And, and let them, when the 2008 moments happen, not the bed yeah. as badly as they probably do it's already. the best we could hope for. Yeah. Exactly because what you're saying. What they do is when, they, when, the, when the bad, when, the, when things like this, what, what's happening now, financial cliff? Mm -hmm. Like everybody's like, oh my God, there's going to be a financial cliff. It's like, well, obviously they have to work it out or else they're going to get run out of town with pitchforks. And These the market's forward looking anyway, so the right. market's already factored in that not wor right. working or not. That's not the news. Right. What we have to teach people on StockTwits and through what you're talking about, yeah. a snapshot of what really is happening under the hood. Yeah. That's what you're talking about, which I yeah. agree with. We need to give the 99 percenters a snapshot that they trust. And to not worry. Like, I mean, it, people are yeah. so panicked watching CNBC is just like, because they're so desperate to get ratings. Yeah. They're sitting there trying to play this hype machine to just keep you involved for five more minutes, ten more minutes, to get a couple more ad views. That all they can, their only currency is not, their currency is panic. Their currency, here's here's how broken not TV is, and let's not single out just CNBC, yeah. let's talk about Fox and CNN, yeah. and this is exactly, you're nailing it. And this is why I started with Wall Street, and this is why I continue, I've made 10 investments in the last year in the financial web. Right. So from Covestor to uh, Y Charts, which is killing it. Yeah, Y Charts good. Yeah, yeah Chicago. Yeah. Um, they were a tech rich company. Were they? Okay. Yeah, they launched on stage. So I was early, early yeah. in that. Um, and uh, a couple that I can't disclose, but yeah. like, I feel, like the individual sh should have these tools. You shouldn't have to pay $2,000 a month to get uh -huh. a snapshot, because all Bloomberg is is a nice packaging, good customer support wrapped around a, a communications product. Mm. The reason Bloomberg works, it's the original Facebook. Well, the original Facebook was Marlboro cigarettes. You sat around, and if you smoked, right. well, dude, we had something in common. Right. We both smoked, we were pariahs, we right. got kicked out of restaurants together, we yeah. were like a, a social network. Yeah. Along comes Bloomberg. Bloomberg's the best social network that ever was created. Just that Hence, chatter, that chatting. No. It was like, I'm a hedge fund. I don't want to talk to Howard, mm. who can't afford two grand a month. Oh. I'm going to talk to a hedge fund over here who's been curated. You know why he's curated? Because he's paying 2000 a month. Oh. He can't be a putz. It's in, the, it's in the country club. It's the country club. Right. So he's got lockdown of all right. the smart people, meaning even if they wanted to leave, they don't leave because everybody else who's smart is on the network. And That's well, why Bloomberg's and, and winning. That's why he's mayor. That's why he's the real mayor, not a badge mayor. He, is he a great mayor? Don't know. I you mean, New know, York, man. I couldn't live in New York, so I don't know. I'm not a big <laughs> Bloomberg fan. Like, if everybody loves him, I think there's probably something so what is So what, what do you think? Is the media gonna, is, is the media collapsing on itself and this is going to be sort of replaced by this new authentic sort of web stuff? It seems like the web stuff, to me, like when you look at Business Insider and you look at Huffington Post, like the reblogging and... Is it starting to collapse on itself, like where they're not doing original reporting or? Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah. I think news is a dumb business. Like, yeah. what is news? Is my mom watching about a child disappearing in Fort Lauderdale every day news? Uh, that stuff's happening whether they're reporting it or not. Right. Okay. Now, yes, it's important that we catch that person. Yeah. But me hearing about it in San Diego is not news. Right. Because I, my little world, I'm worried about the Navy SEALs that haven't come home. Right. Okay. So, so I don't think news is a business. Hmm. And I think a, news, a local newspaper once a week is a good business, and it'll always be around because right. I only need my news once a week. But we're obsessed with the media. Uh, who's we? I'm not. The public seems to be, right? Yeah. I mean, or the is public... it just that we're like traveling in the L.A., New York 
San Francisco media bubble. I just don't watch TV and don't watch news. I'm not obsessed with news. I'm obsessed with smart people. Uh, I'm obsessed with the crack of opening up my stream and uh, it being smart. Paul right? Pedrowski or somebody saying well, something Paul's smart. not smart. Paul thinks he's, he's not smart. smart. Paul thinks he's smart. Who's smart? Who's smart? Bill Gurley? He writes Super a post smart. every like six months and you're like, wow. Super smart guy. Why didn't I think but about that? But he's not on... I don't, you know, you're never going to see him when you tune into Twitter. No. So what I'm, what I'm he looking did do, for. He did CNBC. I don't know if you saw him on CNBC. They let him talk? Did they let him they talk? They let him talk, and he just, like, crushed them with his intelligence. Yeah. It was like, they were just sitting there. They just didn't even know how to respond because yeah. they had never heard such intelligence on their program. The, the thing about CNBC, it could be so good. If they let you or I run it, it'd yeah. be so good. Because we would do these for an hour and a half. Right. Because in the end, if you got a great quote screen. You could have monkeys playing. Uh, yeah. CNBC could put on monkeys playing that uh, board games. Right. It would kill. Yeah. It would kill. I mean, they'd have to sell banana or dole. They'd have to get different sponsors. Right. But people are only there to see the quotes. Right. And so what I told Fred with stock twits and the human ticker is, let's give that ticker some context. Mm. Meaning, if I see QQQ or SPY and it's all just machines trading, right. I'd rather be able to click into Joe Bot right. APL. Who the f- is Joe? Right. And then why? I can click in yeah. and I can actually talk to Joe. Right. Hello, that. that's stock twit. Right. Okay, that, in the essence, was when I saw Twitter. I go, whoa, Twitter for verticals is a home run. Right, and it hasn't happened. Because I, they know, have bought, no soul I a to attack of that. I bought a bunch of domains around that. Yeah, so, uh, so like, did that's I. That's work. So did I. James Altuche and, yeah. and I bought, we had a company called 140 Labs. This was yeah. back in 2007. Yeah. And we were launching with uh, Marissa, who yeah. used to work for me, we were launching 140 this, 140 that. Right. But like you you learn, and as I've learned, yeah. it's not easy to do. It's easy to come up with a name and a right. domain. But building a business. It's, it's hard, hard, tedious. And, you know, and you got to, it's like the yeah. Mesopotamian line. It's like, if you think it's a great idea, get drunk and s- wake up tomorrow and see if it's a good idea. Huh. Right? That's I mean, a pretty good test. Yeah, it's a good test. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, high fives, great idea. Go get hammered. Yeah. Wake up, throw up, take three avo and go, you know, is that idea still worth doing? The and if you test. continue to do that, Mesopotamia, I think it was, Mesopotamia it was way back. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so you got to like really want this stuff. But CNBC could be great. Mm-hmm. CNBC would have to cut everybody, do this type of interview, get Bill Gurley on and say, Bill, I don't want to hear your take on Citibank. I want to hear what's going on in Silicon Valley. Right. You have the mic for an hour. Got go. It. And uh, let, let's talk about um, the United States in regard to, is it a declining empire? Are we turning into Europe? Is that a bad thing? You know, we, we sort of have the, this big debate that occurred in this election about jobs. Mm-hmm. There's nothing either president can do about the fact that billions of people in China and India are taking the jobs out of America. It, it's a systematic, like, multi-decade trend that we just can't fight. This yeah. con- is this country screwed or not? No, I think what, what c- people need to travel here. Like people, I used to make fun of the states, obviously, as a Canadian, I'm born and raised in Toronto. I go, oh, Americans are so dumb. They only travel within America. Right. Okay, now I think that's all they should do. Right. Because you can go to Vegas and see the rest of the world. So right. I was in Vegas last week and it was like, oh, I was in Chile, I was in India, yeah. I was in like, you go stay at an Encore or the Wynn, which is a, a wealthy person's hotel. Right. And just go hang out and see where the other wealthy people are hanging out. Right. Used to be just wealthy Texas people. Right. Guess what? I didn't see a person from Texas at right. the Encore win. China. Chile. You know where it's coming from? Latin America, finally. Yeah. Argentina, Brazil. Chile, Brazil. These places I'm are super strong. bullish on America yeah. because in the end, working hard is wins. Yeah. Working hard is what wins. Right. And hard Still working people all over the world, if they work hard for 10 years right. and continue to polish and refine, just like working coal into diamonds, right. if you continue to polish one thing well, right. your special purpose, as Steve Martin says, you will be great. Yeah. And so America is going to be the best place barring something that we can't foresee or speculate on. Right. Okay, is Obama crazy and going to turn us into socialist freaks? Yeah, I mean, get, all bets are off. I don't right. know. We got four I don't years like to paying, find out. I don't like paying 50% taxes in California, right. but I think I love living in California. Yeah. Hence, I pay the man. At right. some point, it'll make sense to live in New York, which is the same taxes, crappy weather, half the right. city's underwater. Right. Why would I want to live in New York? Right. So I think the people that are doomsaying America are just lazy. It's easy to be skeptical. Right. It's easy to be a doomsayer. 
It's hard to dig in. Right. And it's hard to understand how smart people do. It's hard to get on a plane just to, for research and go to Vegas and just look around right. and go, what is happening? Talk yeah. to people at your Chinese restaurant. There wasn't a goddamn Chinese restaurant in, in, in Vegas 10 and years ago. And now the wind has two. Exactly. They got the dim sum place and then they got the sit down And place. I was at right. all of them and there wasn't a Chinaman in it. Huh. It was Indians, it was Latin Americans, there were Jews, a couple Jews because it was Thanksgiving. Yeah. But there wasn't a goddamn person from the States. There. That's true. Jews eat Chinese on Thanksgiving. On Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Christmas, and Sundays. So, so I, think, I think America is just getting started. Huh. I think for us in the startup world to be, this is what's so great about startups. No friction, no right. government, no nothing. Yeah. It's like stop reading the news because your startup is not affected by the news. Stop, your, effect, your, your startup is affected by friction that is created by the world, mm. which you can't <laughs> deal with. You right. can't do, do anything about it. And your friction price that you did, how many founders, what's your cap table look like? Right. Is your lawyer good? Are you paying too much friction. on lawyers? Yeah. Like, I mean, figure out how to do fast, 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 fast. Startups are about going fast. Mm. And I don't like the word fail, failing fast, dumb. I don't give a work to succeed, but do it fast, mm. okay? And I'm not saying reckless fast, use the tools that are around you. Fred Wilson, right. he's writing every day. You've got this show. I'm right. writing about how to do stock market. Right. You got, you know, it's just an arsenal tools of tools. The tools are out there. Arsenal but yet, of tools. But yet, there's still, like you say, people who are just complaining and whining about how hard it is. It's so easy. Thank God there's people that complain. I, yeah, Ronnie Dangerfield said it, like in the movie Caddyshack. He goes, yeah. the world needs ditch diggers too. Right. Okay? And the ditch diggers in my world are the complainers. The right Those are the people that say, ah, stock twits is such stupid. What do I want to hear for a bunch of dummies? I'm like, good. The world needs people to, to, to quickly dismiss ideas. Right. Because that's what hardworking people do. They see an idea, just like I saw the dollar sign and the hashtag and, and, and Twitter for stocks. I wasn't smart enough polishing. to do Twitter. Yeah. And you just start polishing. Use your domain expertise. And you know, when I think about startups and mobile and web video, the two biggest ones, nobody has domain expertise. That's the interesting so that's, part. So it's a wide open game. What are people complaining about? Nobody knows anything about mobile. It's two years old. It's an hour old. Right. There is no domain expertise. Everybody's figuring it out. Exactly. So. Right. Your chances are just as good as mine. But be mindful of valuations. If you're an entrepreneur, stop with the $8 million pre. Right. you got to take some money, go fast, right. understand, and give your investor a deal. Right. What's wrong with giving your investor a deal? I Why always like that. Common? Yeah. That may keep investing. Hello? Yeah. Then they're so addicted just, to investing in your startups. I want to surprise. When I did stock twits at 600 k valuation, I didn't have to do that. I walked into Borthwick. He goes, he goes I'm in. I said, well, of course you're in. It's a 600. I don't need you. Right. But I'm saying, like, sometimes you give people a deal. Right. And it just, it just, it grows. It blossoms. It blossoms. And giving people deals and not being greedy is very important. Question from one of the viewers. High frequency trading machines bad? Good? <sighs> Crazy? Machines are just there. The machines are dumb. The machines are coming, as Brad Feld says. You can't beat the machines. Let them come. What, Warren, but what did Warren Buffett do? The more the machines got closer to the pipe, here's what Wall Street looks like. It's this pipe connected to a wall right. with like one white dude talking, right. breaking news through this pipe. Right. Everybody's paying to get this close to the pipe. Yeah. Guess what? Why pay? Stand over here. Right. The further, the higher the machines trade, the further away you think. Do you think mm. the machines got Apple right? Right. Apple's gone up a thousand percent in the last three years. Machines well, can't. Why do I need a high frequency trade? Ignore it. It's great for the market. I think high frequency trading great for the market because guess what? I don't high frequency trade. You know what high frequency trade brought me? Two cent commissions. Right. So now I can buy five thousand shares of Apple. Who cares if it's five hundred or five fifty? It cost me two cents. Right. I know it's semi undervalued at that price. Right. And um, I'm not worried about trading it out tomorrow. So high frequency traders, the, the machines are never going to tire themselves out. Hmm. They're only going to get faster. Right. And you can only get this close to the cable. Yeah. And then we're talking already. And so it also the first Warren Buffett just stands way back here. Yeah. She says, let me just pick who's going to win over three decades. Yeah. Once it gets past the line, it's like football. You got the line of scrimmage and you got 700 pound guys now yeah. going, guess what? They're not going to get smaller. Right. They're just going to get bigger. But guess what happens when you break through the line of scrimmage now? They can't. Explodes. Yeah. Chaos. Right. Like the guy's 80 yards in right. three seconds. Right. That's the stock market. The high frequency traders are going like this. Right. There's going to be more apples. There's going to be more this. There's going to be more straight up shots. What do they do with 120 shots. billion in cash? I mean, they're the largest hedge fund in the world now. Should I, they just give it all back? Just dip it I in? think, like you, I think, like, just surprise us. I want to wake up one day and go, $90 billion cash dividend. Yeah. You just decide, you know, 
Steve Jobs. He's a yeah. cranky, cranky old man. We're giving yeah. back $90 billion. We know you're going to piss it away. But you know what? Why are we sitting on $90 billion where four guys from Stanford are, are trading quant, you know, cattle futures yeah. to worry about this stuff? I think they're making a mistake. I think they should give back a whack of it. Huh. And and they should be the leaders of this country. I think I think you lead by this country, not by worrying about what Obama did, but giving people back their money. I mean, you know, yeah. I'd like to wake up one day and be surprised that Apple just gave me $75 a share in cash. Right. The stock Crazy. wouldn't go down, by the way. The stock would actually go up. Because people gonna... would say, oh, that's going to happen again. Maybe. And yeah. it's like, good move. Yeah. Why do I need to hoard all the money? You don't need all the money. And they haven't bought Twitter when they easily could. Is that because Twitter's not for sale? Don't. They won't pay for the price. Because that would seem to me like the natural home for it. Like, if they bought it, it's you know works perfectly on your iPhone. It can be integrated with your authentication system, the Apple ID and your Twitter ID merge. It's possible. I mean, you know, I, I try not. At, you know, I sold my Twitter. I think I have a few thousand shares left, but I sold it. It was like ten billion dollars, and I'm like, hang on. I invested for other, with other people's money at very low valuations. Right. My job is not to manage their money when it becomes. A ten billion dollar company. Right. I remember writing my my limited partners a letter saying, ah, it's, you know, and I, I definitely sold some too early as yeah. well at four or five billion. Um, but I, I would I would have sold it a billion if people. Only a hundred x. I, I, yeah. I would I would have sold it a billion if they yeah. let me. Right. I used to argue with Borthwick and, and Weissman. Let's sell this. Let's sell this thing. And I yeah. go, what? It's going to be. I could, they, people throw around these numbers like it's nothing. Right. So I wrote my investors a letter saying, this is. Let me give you back the money. Right. What do I what? Yeah, that's not my job. Hmm. So I think I think Twitter is finally in a place where they could be a great, they could be a thirty-year company because hmm. they don't talk about. Excuse me, they don't yeah. talk about being a thirty-year company. So I think I think it's just an interesting product. I mean, you use it, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm at Jason on Twitter. It's going to be my handle for life. Me too. At yeah. Howard Lindzen, it's yeah. going to be my handle for life. I think people are making mistakes. I think people don't understand how important it is to own your own domain and yeah. master your own domain, as Seinfeld sure. said. I think yeah. people need to start doing that. Right. It's a tool in the toolbox, and you right. get bored of it, and you find the next shiny thing. But you should still own your domain. Right. Oh, you mean your dot com? Anything. You should yeah. own all that stuff. Yeah. And get it pointing back to the right person. Hmm. Uh, unless you're hiding stuff. What do you think about Hollywood? What happens with Hollywood now? You got YouTube is becoming whatever, 30, 40, per, online video, 30, 40% of what consumption is, only 1% of the advertising revenue. Yeah. Is TV screwed? I mean, it seems like TV's, you know, getting better and better every year. The I content's TV's, getting better. I think TV is as strong as ever. I think yeah. TV, I think TV is like day one. I think, um, yeah, Henry and all these guys, smart guys, death of this, death of that. Have you looked at D Disney stock? All time highs. You look at, e at CBS. CBS yeah. was a $3 stock in 2008. It was supposed to be dead. Guess what? Thirty dollars stock. Yeah. Cooking along. Yeah. Bad acquisitions and everything. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, who cares? These are yeah. great. They have attention. Right. And the wall is a TV. Right. And yeah, it's going to get better. I've never watched better TV than I've watched it's in the last three years. How between high so definition good? sports. Right. And great content. It's unbelievable. Heaven. Yeah, I mean, it's like there are too many good shows to choose between. Too much talent out there. Yeah. And, and there's just that industry set up with good curation tools. Mm. And that's why As opposed I think to our industry. Terrible curation tools, which is we why suck. I always was mad at Twitter for the first five years and mm. why I started investing in comedy sites mm. here. I invested in Laughter, which is a yeah. local, you know, kind of uh, curation around humor mm. and Witstream, which is mm. kind of like a Twitter for comedians. Right. I think, I think... Uh, you have to curate this stuff down and create yeah. channels. You know, the guy who invented TV, what's his name? Do you know him? No. Okay, so like, why does Twitter have to have an ego around who's the boss and yeah. who invented this? Right. The channels are what's going to matter, yeah. right? The attention goes to the channels. CBS, ABC, HBO, NBC. I think Twitter will spawn a lot of channels, mm. and I don't think they can control all that. Yeah, and they seem to be tightening up now. Yeah, I mean, I developers and pressure, man. You know the pressure. You raise a lot of money, there's a lot of pressure. You got to get the revenue up, and you got to get the stock price up, and yeah. it's all about momentum, man. Once you, once you, people think that it's, 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 it's a game, but I mean, avoiding revenue early mm. only adds stress later. Right. Eventually, like this, we can start. It's a profitable, simple business. Right. And so you could have done it the hard way by raised a lot of money. Yep. Hired a lot more people to do this show, yep. like Wall Strip did. Right. And then the pressure is we got to sell because right. we got three months of runway left. Yeah. Okay. So now this become a sustainable business. Yes. So I'm very pro sustainable business right now, mm. and for about the last year, I've been thinking way smaller. I've been right. thinking like you know, I moved to an island for Christ's right. sake. Right. Yeah. Like I have to drive over a bridge to hit humanity. Right. 
Right. Um, but I think it helped me think through how this next wave of investing is. Like, who cares where I live? Right. Why does that matter? And Doesn't why isn't everybody anymore. living on Coronado, by the way? Right. Beautiful places to yeah. live in Los Angeles. It's five minutes from an airport. airport. Whatever, yeah. People are dumb. So I just thank God. Thank God people are dumb. All right. There you have it. Hey, everybody. Um, thanks to our sponsors, GoToMeeting, and thanks uh, to New Relic. Great, uh, great products uh, that we use. And so you never have to worry about that. Whitelisted advertising here. It's sold out for five or six months. Madness. Um, and everybody follow Howard Linzen, L-I-N-D-Z-O-N. Howard Linzen. We're not going to do our boxing match. See, I would I love to do that, was, that, but you were a black belt. I See, know, the thing is, the you would have kicked my ass. That and I was, was smart the best enough. performance art we ever did. Because people... People yeah. were like, is that serious? And I told them. Oh, you would have kicked my ass. It is dead serious. Yeah, but I was like, I'll fight you if you're not a black belt. And you were a goddamn black belt. But then, see, I, see we never got to the counter, which was I would have done it with one hand. You still would have kicked my ass. Dude, I am. But it would have. Can you imagine? If, I'll do it right now. If we can raise enough no, money. I don't think people I just would pay to that see that me in a Speedo. Be, no. The funniest thing would be. Because Henry Blodgett wrote it up. Everybody wrote it up. They thought yeah. we were serious. Yeah. And I told everybody, said, are you really fighting with Howard? Yeah. And I said, Howard and I don't really know each other. Yeah. And if you look at his Twitter stream, it's like one big ball busting, yeah. chop busting. Like, that's what I do all day, too, by the way. Like, if two guys who just bust Yeah, you bust were bullying, chops, and I was just bullying you back. Yeah. And yeah. if two guys who just bust balls all day start busting each other's balls, do you really think that we're going to get in a boxing ring? It's probably not going to happen. If it does, it'll be the most genius thing ever. I would have loved to have done it if I knew I wasn't going to. I'll go into a ring with you right. if I to think I have ping a pong. chance. Ping pong, no, stock pick. No, fight if it's going to raise money and I have a fighting chance. But if you're a black Maybe belt, I have, to I have wear, no shot. Yeah, no, you're, you're screwed. You're screwed in that regard. Yeah, and I, I'm not dumb. I'm happy to, like, help charities. No, no, I don't I don't really want to pitch up, Howard. Okay. Um, yeah, I, that would not be fun for me. Yeah, um, and I think you're doing great work. Listen, in the end, like, I bust your balls. Right. And I bust a lot of people's balls. But guess what? I'm trading against the smartest people in the world all day. I'm letting off steam. Right. All I'm doing is letting off steam. What do you think John Stewart's doing? He's yeah. letting off steam. Right. And guess what? He's inspired so many. Like, that's what I've, any dream would be, this is your dream, to create right. the John Stewart of startup. Wouldn't right. you? Wouldn't yeah. you like to be that famous sure. and be able to do what you do? Yeah. Put on your tie and your suit every day. Have someone write you brilliant stuff. You're a great deliverer of content. It's a pretty good idea. It's pretty the good. best idea. And yeah, he appreciates his Rose. job. Like, just be, Charlie yeah. Rose, like, think but about he's that no job. John Stewart. No, but I mean... I'd rather have John Stewart Rose's... interview the people that Charlie Rose is interviewing, That's by a the fair way. point. But I mean, think about Charlie Rose's gig for the last, whatever, 30, 40 years. I think he phones it in, though. I, I'm, I'm a John Stewart fan. I think John Stewart I, no, John is John's truly happy to work. see those guys. I think John Stewart is like, dude, guess who I'm talking to? Yeah, he's pretty stoked. But I mean, what a gig. Just yeah. show up, talk awesome. to interesting people. Yeah, well, you're you done. have that possibility. You you can do I'm that. I'm getting there. I'm yeah. getting there. I just, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to sign a reality TV deal. Don't. Stay away from TV. You think so? Yeah. yeah. See, that's what I'm trying to figure out. It's like these reality TV people are sweating me, and they're like, hey, do this reality TV show. And blah, 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 Interviews blah. or a show? Uh, the idea we have right now is sort of like uh, Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares, uh -huh. which is I go in, this business is completely screwed up, I <laughs> yell at everybody. Then they cry. Then I tell them, listen, mate, I'm on your side. I bit, listen, big boy, you can do this. <laughs> but you know it's fake because that's not it how it really no, goes. I know you, you like to yell and I like here, to yell. I, I do yell at people I understand, sometimes about but stuff. But that's not scalable, meaning yeah. you're entitled to be Jason Calcanos because yeah. you started the company and you right. raised the money. Right. Okay. But that doesn't scale. Jason yeah. Calcanos does not scale. Howard right. Lindzen does not scale. Right. We are unique in that we're insane right. and that we like doing what we like to do, but you and I are not CEOs at, in the long-term sense of being right. CEOs. We're insane. Right. Um, and we, 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 we hold people up to a standard that's not nobody can attain. Right. And that's not the people's fault or our employees' fault or our partner's fault. It's because right. we're insane. Right. And so I don't think that's a TV show. Then you're Kramer. And then you're going to end up divorced, and then you're going to end up with, like, your kids fat and not liking you. <laughs> and uh, is, that, is that Kramer's That's line? what I'm going to tell you as your new friend. I'm going to say, don't do TV. Don't do TV? All right. Yeah. Well, then we got one vote in the no TV column. You guys can all vote on Twitter. Um, Howard, great guest and uh, great discussion. Everybody check out Stock Twits, of course. Please. Really brilliant um, startup. I check it all the time um, when I'm looking at what companies. Tickers. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just looking at tickers, you know, and, like, I think it's a really cool thing. Like, instead of saying Google and doing at Google, which is kind of lame, do dollar on Google, but they and then people make listen. that clickable. No, now they've made it clickable. It is clickable? To themselves. That to was a, a really cheap move. Own. That was a cheap move by Twitter. Nah. So wait, wait. Now when you click it, what happens? It, just... it takes you to their spam-filled streams. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No they curation. locked it down. No curation. 
See, what they should do they is... They won't win. That only helped us, by the way. So yeah. it's like, in the end, right. it's just a bad move. You don't do that kind of stuff to build great businesses. They should you do, do that kind of stuff when you have VCs. They should pay you to put the StockTwits logo on... Exactly. Um, the tweets, or like curate, like the first five should be stock tweets. They should tweets, have an extra Alicia stream Bull. that says curated by stock tweets. Yeah. You trust that brand, just for yeah. tickers, go there. Hello. Yeah. Right. I, Makes total sense. Yeah. All right, we'll see everybody next time on This Week in Startups.